this is What's With People with Doc Locke. I'm social psychologist Dr. Stephanie Lockmiller, and today we are talking about the question, what's with people arguing on social media? Does it actually help to change people's minds? Okay, so does it actually change people's minds? No. What? No. Get out of here. Okay, yeah, so you might not be surprised, but what you might not have known is that debating people on the internet is not just ineffective at changing people's minds, it actually may be making their and your opinions even stronger. Unintended consequences. This is because of a phenomenon called group polarization, which is when group discussion strengthens people's beliefs. Most studies showing this effect have groups of participants who all have the same attitude towards a topic and they spend time discussing the topic together. And what they find is that as like-minded people talk about their beliefs, they end up having even stronger opinions. Those beliefs are so strong. This was found amongst juries deciding sentences or people discussing politics and even discussions amongst prejudiced people. Are you hysterious? For example, one study found that people who had higher prejudice had even more prejudice after discussing race with other prejudiced people, and those with lower prejudice had decreased prejudice after discussing race with other low prejudice people. Group polarization happens mostly because what is called informational influence, which says that people become even more convinced of their views when they hear new arguments in support of their position. In a discussion, each group member comes into the discussion with information and arguments already in their head. But some of the info may be different and new to others, so during the discussion, the new information and arguments supporting their view are revealed to other group members, giving them more reason to lean into that direction. In other words, as each group member expresses their arguments during the discussion, the amount of evidence increases due to the revealing of new supporting positions and ideas. Oh. So here's the thing, the internet and social media has made it super easy to surround ourselves with people and information that supports our views, which is exactly what we tend to do anyways. Many studies have found that when people are presented with information that either supports or opposes their beliefs, people are much more likely to prefer and choose and remember the supporting evidence. This is called selective exposure. It's the tendency for people to seek information that agrees with their beliefs and to avoid information that disagrees with them. You're wrong, I'm right. And this is why we seek out news sources and memes and friends that typically confirm our beliefs. And with the internet at our disposal, this happens at a much larger scale. I mean, you got larger audience, you got quicker ability to share, you got more information than ever. It's easy to select information that will reinforce and strengthen our own views from the people we follow and the people we friend, the chat rooms and the blogs that we read, the forums or the social media apps that we join and subscribe to, the websites that we visit. And it's not just our tendency to self-select what agrees with us and avoid what doesn't that promotes this bias, but also the algorithms on these sites help to reinforce this without our awareness. From the ads or suggested friends that show up or the posts that are displayed in our feeds, which is why you can still have your crazy uncle or your high school friends that have weird beliefs as followers or friends Friends, but still be presented primarily with what agrees with you. So, in essence, we end up in a bubble or echo chamber that isolates us with like-minded others, increasing the strength of our beliefs, our interests, our concerns, even our suspicions, because we're gaining more information and arguments, informational influence, and ultimately it creates bigger divides than we ever had. That's why when we comment on others' posts disagreeing with them, we usually get an onslaught of attacks from people who agree with the original poster's ideas because that's who they've surrounded themselves with, which only exacerbates their feelings of rightness when they see more people agreeing with them than disagreeing. But it also increases that informational influence resulting in group polarization and a strengthening of beliefs. Strong. But people who argue are often determined and hopeful that even though they may be in the minority, they will still be able to be persuasive. Problem is that when people are confronted with information that counters their beliefs, in order to maintain a happy, comfy feeling of being right and smart and to protect their self-esteem, people will often avoid and ignore and dismiss and reinterpret and counter that information or discredit the sources. How do I 
get through to you. In fact, an fMRI or a brain scan study found that the reasoning areas of the brain actually shut down when a person is confronted with opposing information. And that's why the most common arguments against opposing information is to dismiss the information as invalid or irrelevant or false or manipulated or fake news. The news is so fake. Pause for laughter. So despite your best intentions when arguing with people online, they aren't actually taking in any of your arguments. They're either ignoring or dismissing the evidence or even coming up with their own counter arguments. And to add to that, the behavior of debating with counter arguments also strengthens their opinion through what is called the self-perception theory, which says that people develop their attitudes by observing their own behavior and then concluding what attitudes must have caused it. In other words, in observing the behavior of arguing in defense of a position and coming up with those counter arguments, the person then subconsciously concludes, well, if I'm saying it and I'm defending it, then I really must believe in it. In conclusion, arguments online are pointless unless your goal is to strengthen your beliefs as well as the other sides. Or if you do it for sport like my dad does, then I guess go for it. But just know that the odds are against you on being able to actually change anyone's minds. Arguing on the internet is pointless. <sighs> Sorry about ya. For more videos and information, please check out whatswithpeople.com and also on Facebook and Instagram and TikTok and YouTube and all of those places. Yay! I'll see you next time.